Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're doing the 17 essential plant nutrients and we are counting our way down to Christmas with these, the thing we like to call plant miss here on the channel. I'm not the owner or the original person of that wording. I was actually a subscriber that came up with that. Just saying a loyal subscriber that literally watches and comments is on all the videos, but nonetheless, a subscriber uh, idea has been for us plant people here on Gardening in Canada. But any hoosers, if I end up with really awkward lighting in this video or the next video I'm gonna film after this, I apologize. It is 1.21 currently here where I am in Canada and the sun is setting. So it's like, the sun is setting. And I, I wish I was joking, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. It's setting at 1.30. I get some awkward lighting in this. I apologize, nothing I can do about it. So today's video, we're gonna talk about hydrogen. So hydrogen is obviously taking up in the form of H2O, so water. And it's taken up via mass flow. That is the water mechanism or the straw mechanism we've talked about in the past. And its sole purpose is for respiration, obviously. It's one of the byproducts of respiration, but also for proton um, exchange and effectiveness in the plant. So think of it as kind of like a, a ladder. So the hydrogen ions within the plant and the soil act as a ladder for nutrients to move from the soil to the root, to the stem, to the leaves, to the flowers. And that's basically what hydrogen or the role hydrogen plays, but it should not be understated because it is, I mean, it is a primary macronutrient, meaning it is up there with carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, phosphorus, potassium, that sort of thing. So it is up there in the upper echelons. It's needed in relatively high quantities for that plant to survive. And it is used on a moment to moment basis, non stop. So when you think about it that way, the fact that hydrogen and oxygen are um, macronutrient, I would implore you to quite honestly look at how much you let your plants dry out between waterings. Now that you know that these nutrients are considered essential for plant survival, will you change the way you choose to water your houseplants or your indoor plants in general? I encourage you to go with a more porous medium that allows for more air exchange or air infiltration to help with the microbes and support aerobic microbes rather than anaerobic microbes. But I also encourage you to keep that uh, soil moist, relatively moist at all times. And so long as you have the air that you need present, to support aerobic rather than anaerobic microbes, you will be just fine. You will not get root rot. Root rot does not happen in the presence of oxygen, but damage to the plant, yellowing leaves, stunted growth, that sort of thing does happen when we don't have enough hydrogen and we don't have enough oxygen, we don't have enough essential nutrients, and for all intents and purposes, a huge portion of that nutrient is taken up in a soil solution, meaning a slurry of some sort that needs the presence of two hydrogens and an oxygen, something we like to call water, H2O, to be present. So you are starving your plant when these things are not around. So just keep that in mind. How long could you go without food and water? You know, water, I, I don't, I think it's like two or three days, not even that you could survive. That's if you're like sitting still and doing nothing. Food, you can go a little bit longer, but water, you, you really do need that. And plants, you know, work on the same spectrum. Now, of course, there are oddities to this. There's going to be your C4 plants, which we talked about in our Sansevieria, um, Sansevieria video where we talked about snake plants potentially being C4 plants and how they have different mechanisms in which they can support themselves in the absence of water and things like succulent and cacti also fall, fall into that category. But just keep in mind, the rest of your plants don't. They are C3 plants and they do need water in some uh, at some point and at, on a con relatively continual basis. So now one thing with hydrogen that I do want to drive home because there isn't a ton to talk about when it comes to hydrogen. It obviously comes in the form of water. It's uptaken through mass flow. It's a primary macronutrient and clearly it functions as a stepping ladder for nutrient to kind of hop its way up from the soil to the root and et cetera through the entire plant. And another really important factor of hydrogen to the plant as a whole actually is what's in the soil. So hydrogen is 
what we're counting when we're counting the number of, um, or when we're determining the pH. So what we're doing is we're actually counting the total number of hydrogen within our soil solution. So if you remember back to our video that we did on nitrogen, we talked about the potential of gaining or losing hydrogens from our nitrogen um, molecule. So the forms of nitrogen molecules we had was ammonia and ammonium. So both of which have hydrogens attached to them. Now we also have molecules such as nitrate and nitrite that can pick up hydrogens and form an even bigger molecule. Or in some cases they may lose a hydrogen from that bigger molecule and release it back into the soil. So as more hydrogens are released into the soil solution and popping off of our nutrients, such as ammonium, for example, we end up with a more acidic soil. The more hydrogens, the more acidic. However, when we reduce the number of hydrogens in our soil, hydrogen ions in our soil, we end up with a more alkaline soil or a more basic soil, as some people like to call it. So we end up pushing above seven on the pH scale. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do I add more hydrogen? and How do I take out more hydrogen? And this is what we're doing when we're using things like soil sulfur, or we're using lime, gypsum, that sort of thing. So if we're trying to make a more alkaline soil, or we're trying to reduce the number of hydrogens in our soil, we add in components that will bind to hydrogen. So we're not simply just plucking the hydrogen out and vaporizing them into the air, rather we're binding them to another molecule so that the plant can uptake them and they're not left in suspension of that soil solution in the soil smoothie as we like to call it. So once it's removed from the soil smoothie, then what ends up happening is our pH ends up, you know, increasing over time. So if we're on, you know, a really toxic range of acidity, say a pH of four or, you know, five, then when we add things that help increase that, we're actually pulling hydrogens out of solution. Conversely, if we have a very alkaline scenario, say we are, have a pH of eight or nine, and we're trying to bring it back down, we need to add hydrogens to the soil solution. So this, um, for hydroponic growers, comes in the form of a little bottle, and the little bottle you put drops in, and all that's doing is it's simply adding, adding hydrogen molecules to the solution, or again, removing them. But for us plant people to change that pH, again, we have to have additions. Now keep in mind, there's a wide range of different plants out there, all of which kind of have a different preference for how many hydrogens they want in their smoothie. So think of it as you and your friend go to Booster Juice, someone wants the or sunrise whatever, and the other person wants mango pineapple, for example. So those are scenarios where you each have a different preference in what you need to thrive and survive in. So always make sure you look up what your particular plant enjoys most and then adjust according to that. But that is all I have for hydrogen today and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you learned new in this video. It just gives me a little bit of an idea as to where you guys are at in both your soil and your plant science knowledge. I'm not, you know, offended if you know nothing and I'm not offended if you knew everything. Quite honestly, it's just to give me a bit of a feel to gauge what type of videos you guys want in the future. But anyways, I want to thank you guys for, and the reason I say that is because some of my videos I make and I get comments like I had to bring out the dictionary and the thesaurus to even understand what was happening. And then other videos, I don't get a ton of engagement. So I get the sense that maybe you guys already knew everything. So I'm just trying to get a feel for where, where we're at as a group. So I can, you know, obviously give you interesting information, not just regurgitate stuff you guys obviously already know. Uh, like I said, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.